Okay. So talking about the means, I understand you work with this kind of states, which are like expanded states of consciousness, or you call them holotropic, no? Yeah. And I understand you, uh, this somehow activate the self-healing intelligence of the organism, or of the of the psyche, no? Could you please explain how this works? What is this healing intelligence, or how, how does it move? Yeah, well, that's, that has to do with the um, with the problems which we have with psychiatric therapy. You know, current psychiatry psychiatric therapy uh, is uh, limited officially to uh, suppressing symptoms, some kind of uh, uh, psychopharmacological intervention, and then talking talking therapy, you know, individual or in in groups. Uh, so um, limiting psychiatrists uh, to symptomatic suppression is a really very bad practice. Mm. You know, uh, psychiatry uh, developed as a um, subspecialty of medicine, mm -hmm. and they're following sort of uh, therapies and practices of medicine. Now, in medicine, uh, it would be very bad practice if you if you focus yourself on suppression of symptoms. Uh, this, uh, you use uh, sort of symptomatic repression in somatic medicine in two situations. One is if you simultaneously do causal etiological therapy, you address the causes, and you still want to make the patient more comfortable, you okay. give them some symptomatic uh, treatment. Uh, and the second situation, if we don't have any kind of uh, uh, therapy, etiological therapy, all we can do is just to suppress symptoms. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we limit ourselves in uh, psychiatry to suppressing of symptoms, uh, you know, it would be um, uh, like in uh, physical medicine, uh, treating uh, fever by putting people on ice without asking why do they have the fever? There could be all kinds of infections there or uh, other reasons. And if we would just ignore the, the deeper, the, the causal etiological treatment and just focus on, on uh, suppressing the symptoms, you know, this would be very, very bad practice. And uh, in more and more psychiatry is now limiting itself to just finding some effective way of suppressing symptoms and calling it uh, therapy. So when I was beginning, uh, psychiatrists, we were distinguishing two categories of treatment. One was called uh, uncovering and the other one covering. Mm -hmm. And the uncovering was do something that you can really get to the causes and you can really change uh, somehow the situation that uh, uh, causes the symptom to, to emerge. And then the other one was called um, covering therapy, where you just, uh, you know, mediate, uh, ameliorate the symptoms. Now, the very clear preference was to try to do some uh, uncovering therapy to really get to the core of the problem. But if there is not enough uh, time or not enough uh, uh, means, not enough money and so on, then the second best would be just to treat the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now the problem was that the uncovering therapy was uh, mostly Freudian psychoanalysis, which is really not a very effective way of, uh, of uh, treating the causes. But basically Freud was on the right track. He was asking why do people have hysteria, why do people have uh, uh, obsessive compulsive neurosis, how deep in the psyche it goes, and he tried to bring uh, explanations for it, but was limited by uh, the postnatal model, the model that he had no way of getting farther than than uh, childhood and infancy. Uh, so now, if we if we use the, the holotropic states, we can now basically uh, continue Freud's uh, effort to find the roots, but we now have means of actually finding the deeper the deeper uh, roots of uh, these problems on the perinatal level, the transpersonal level. Um, now, what happened in, in psychiatry is 
because the psychoanalysis was not really very effective in healing these uh, emotional psychosomatic problems, they just completely moved away for it, mm. from it. So in the DSM uh, 5, 4, 5, they uh, don't mention any etiology. They just uh, move to something that they call neo uh approach. Now, uh, Emil Kreppelin was in, in the turn of the 19th and 20th century who actually created the first psychiatric diagnosis. Mm -hmm. One was uh, uh, dementia precox, which later became schizophrenia, and the other one was medic depressive disorder. Yeah. So basically he was just describing the, the symptoms. Uh, and so this is what now the DSM is, is doing. And uh, there's some don't mention etiology at all. And now what's exciting about the holotropic states is that we can now expand it and we can really uh, describe what's, what is behind, on a deeper level of unconscious, what is behind these different uh, emotional disorders or psychosomatic disorders. And not only that, but we have a, a ability now with uh, using with uh, using holotropic states to actually reach the reach the deeper roots now this is closely related to the other part of your uh, question in current psycho psychotherapy you know beside it being just limited to uh, mostly to postnatal postnatal biography there's also a totally different understanding of the psyche in the different schools yeah. so uh, they have uh, you know, fundamental differences in opinion as to what are the main motivated uh, motivating forces in the psyche. Is it sex? Is it inferiority feelings that we're trying to overcompensate? Is it that we don't have fully satisfactory uh, sexual life the way Reich was uh, talking about it? Or is it problem with culture? Uh, so. Um, uh, there's just total disagreement as to what, what really is driving the psyche. Uh, total disagreement as to why symptoms develop, what the symptoms mean, you know, how, you, how you work with clients. Each of the schools will give you a different uh, technique. Uh, and the studies that have been done, uh, first of all, show that uh, the psychotherapy is not very effective. Uh, there was some difference between uh, um, the uh, result of uh, any school, or psychotherapeutic school, and patients who were on the waiting list didn't, didn't get any therapy, mm -hmm. but they couldn't find any difference in the results between schools. Actually, if there was a difference, it was inside of the school. Means that uh, uh, it's known that. Some therapists are better than other therapists, but within the schools, not not that one school is systematically bringing better results. And so, very very likely, what decides you know whether there would be effect of psychotherapy has very little to do with what the uh, psychiatrists think they are uh, they are doing. You know, they, uh, probably uh, it's something that is very difficult to describe scientifically. Uh, something like uh, the quality of the human encounter with the, with the therapist and the, and the client. Uh, I mean, the feeling of the client of being uh, unconditionally co accepted by another human being because they didn't, in most cases, have it at home. They didn't experience it in their, in their family. Or may even, may even be the situation that uh, being in therapy gives you ma uh, much more patience with the symptoms. You know, instead of sort of uh, panicking, you focus attention. You know, you lo look at your dreams and, and the symptoms, and you want to bring it to the therapist. So you actually uh, uh, allow more time for the self-healing uh, movement in the psyche to to change the situation. Now the interesting question is, what is the uh, alternative with the, with the holotropic states? Mm -hmm. So when uh, people get into the holotropic states, which could be you know, psychedelic uh, uh, sessions, or it could be uh, holotropic uh, breathwork or some other way of working, 
this experiential, powerful experiential therapy, it is like uh, bringing a kind of inner radar that scans the psyche and finds uh, the areas in the unconscious which have a strong emotional charge, which makes them like really important. And uh, also those that are really close to the threshold of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And those, when we get into that state, kind of live, uh, lowers the niveau and this, uh, this uh, content starts spontaneously uh, emerging from the, uh, from the unconscious. Uh, and, and, you know, become available for processing that day. There are some other important contents, very, very strongly charged emotionally, that will have to wait. Sometimes you have to wait two or three sessions before that particular issue is ready. But the se sequence in which they will be emerging is given by the dynamics of the of the unconscious. It's not given by um, some of the beliefs of a certain school that you think some stuff is more important than others. But what is more important and ready for processing is going to automatically uh, emerge. Spontaneously. Yeah. By itself. Yeah, which means the the therapist, instead of being the sort of the bri brilliant sort of fixer you know, figuring out what's happening and gives a little interpretation there. You have to become like a, a co-adventurer, as Jung called it. You have to uh, cooperate with the, with the kind of a self-healing uh, quality of, the, of uh, the psyche. You know, it, the, the process becomes uh, uh, more like um, midwifery, like delivering a baby rather than doing a surgical operation you have to you know if you're a good good obstetrician you let the organism of the woman deliver the baby and only when it gets stuck you sort of do something and once it keeps going again you you step back and you let nature sort of do that process you know? a good obstetrician is the one who said let me see how the baby should come out and goes there with a the forceps and whistles it uh, you know wiggles the baby uh, out. So many people uh, compare this, some, something like the whole tropic breathwork, to midwifery. You have to have mm. patients step back and then in most instances uh, people do the work themselves. And you know then of course we do some uh, interventions, particular interventions in very specific kind of situations, but in general the process is really a self-healing, uh, self-healing process. And mm. the, if we intervene, we just do something to to cooperate with it, or to deepen, or, or you know, accentuate the, the healing process, rather than bringing something that's coming from our from our head. So that's a very, very radical uh, change in therapy. Basically. You're moving from uh, a combination of uh, verbal therapy or or uh, pharmace pharmaceutical intervention to this sort of um, reliance on the self-healing intelligence in a holotropic state of consciousness.